The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. David's in Paris. Yeah. Uh, let's do a quick testing. Testing. I can see him sitting in his uh, hotel. You got us, David? Hello. Paris, and he's yes, I'm here. North Devil's shirt on. How are you, mate? I'm very well. How are you all? Jealous of you. Mm. Jealous of you mm. in Paris. Yeah, had a good day today. Went out to the well, hey, Stade de France. Tell us after. Take us through your uh, first sort of 24 hours in Paris. Suze hasn't been to Paris for weeks now. <laughs> <laughs> true. Yeah. Very true. The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. Yeah, so David flew out on Friday night, was it Lutzi, for Paris? Correct. Okay, so talk Indeed. us through it. How is Paris in the lead up to the Olympics? When does it start? So it starts on the 26th, uh, which is, geez, when is that? That's next Friday, this Friday. But uh, but that's when the opening ceremony is. But there is sport, like Rugby Sevens, where I'm working, starts on the 24th um, with the men's and then continues on through that. So it's, it's for people watching at home, you'll be able to watch actual Olympic sport from the 24th, I think, football or soccer. Well, the start of then as well, and also the rugby seven. So there'll be plenty on from, what is that, Wednesday? Yeah, well, it's... 24th? It's the 22nd yeah. today. The opening ceremony for people in Brisbane will be on at 3 a.m. Saturday morning. Oh, that's... Oh. Correct. <laughs> and if you want to watch will you get the up first... That, uh, that's a tough Undecided. One, yeah, I want, to see, I want to see what it looks like with the river and everything. But if, if you're watching like sport-wise, I know that the first rugby sevens game, I think it's Australia versus Samoa, and that's that'll be on at 11 p.m. Wednesday night. So right. if you want to catch your first glimpse of the Olympics, you'll have to be up uh, pretty late on, on Wednesday night to check that out. But I went out to the Stade de France today, which is uh, it's a fantastic stadium. It's about 25 years old. I haven't been there in 20 years. I went to the 2003 World Athletics Championships there. So this is where the Rugby Sevens is and then where the Athletics will be as well. Oh, really? Beautiful, beautiful stadium. It's a purple track, so uh, everything around the football field at the moment is purple. Uh, it, it looks amazing. Um, it's going to be pretty cool, I think, and for the athletics as well. It's going to be an amazing. And then from the back of that, Suze, mm-hmm. you can see the um, the aquatic centre, which oh. looks amazing. I'm, I'm trying to work out. I'm just trying to check now where what the capacity is and what exactly they're doing with it. You might know more, whether it's a drop-in it, pool that becomes like an arena. Yeah, it's a drop-in pool because I saw oh, – we should find the site for it where they show it in fast time, them building the Yeah, pool. right. I've got it. Have I you sent, got I it? I sent it to a friend yesterday. How good is yeah, it? Yeah, they show, they show the construction it's of, amazing. of the drop-in pool. We'll throw pool. that on our Insta, Ash Lutzi and Susie O'Neill. What is the capacity? That's a very good question. It looks huge. It looks like I don't, And it's right next to the Stade de France, so um, – yeah, it's really interesting because, geez, I, I saw some video because you know how the Americans are having, they had their US trials in uh, Indianapolis, I think, at a stadium. Mm. I saw one of the world records that was made by one of the American swimmers. The noise when that happened at a stadium was crazy. It's one of the loudest things you'll ever hear. I'll try and find the video of that as well. Um, and remember yeah. in Japan, in Tokyo, there was no crowd. So it's going to be yeah. quite... Uh, it's a way when it's really big difference from the last Olympics to this Olympics competing. Oh, it's going to be huge. In front of crazy, crazy noise, especially for the Australians. Because like you said, the Americans are kind of used to it. Yeah, exactly. It looks like, like it, it looks, this, this aquatic centre looks as big as like the the entertainment centre or like Madison Square Garden or something like that. It looks absolutely the, huge. So, yeah. This, this pool, uh, it took them 36 days to install the, the pool would be fully uh, taken apart after the games with all of the materials used in other um, capacities, mm. but it will be used for the water polo as well. And they also put in the, the training pool alongside it, Lutzi, as well, because I know that people were talking about that if we we're going to do yeah. the Suncorp study. Mm. It can be done. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, it's they're talking... Talk- Definitely can be. Yeah, well, exactly. And we're talking about um, SoFi Stadium is going to host the swimming at the 2028 Olympics. I was talking to one of the American people we're working with today. She was saying that um, that'll, be, that'll be constructed in a week wow. between the opening ceremony and the swimming in the second week of LA. They're going to construct that pool in a week. Everyone, that's the other thing everyone's saying. You can't do it. It takes months. 
well, not the Americans are going to do one in a week. So it's been really interesting to see all that. But it was my first glimpse of uh, the Olympics today because Paris is huge. Like where I'm staying How is kind of a twi- is it though. Like what? Yeah, it's it's sensational. It's Even where I'm, I'm staying. I'm staying. I thought I was in the middle of nowhere. I'm sort of halfway between the state of France and the center of Paris, where I'm staying. I don't even know what the suburbs called. I walked around the back of the hotel and down to this little like canal river. There's like boats with bars on them and restaurants. It's just incredible. Everyone's on a Sunday afternoon here having having their lunches and things like that. And then there is actually a real vibe that the the Olympics is here, which is pretty cool. Even though we're still a few days out, and then I walked around the corner it's like down to this local park there's a huge park down there with a place called um at um France Central, I think it's called, where there's just a huge thing for the French team where people can go and watch the games and there's live concerts. Then there's that Heineken House thing, Ash, where we went to in Sydney, like the Netherlands have their big centre. Then there's like it's just a, a massive setup. Wow. Sounds awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to hear more about it. The Ash Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. It's been a, a busy weekend news wise, capped by the news this morning, by the way, that Joe Biden is not seeking re-election mm. anymore for President of the United States. We're, we're going to speak to a reporter wow. over in the States Hogan. covering that. Yeah, 7.50 this morning. Yeah, 7.50 this morning. But the big news on Friday was this Microsoft outage, which just sparked chaos around the world. There's some type of system failure, grounded planes, uh, I know TV channels. Radio out, stations. Radio stations, airports. I think... Um, banks. Ricky, Tim and Joel did the show via a laptop. Did you see that? No. They plugged their laptop into mm. the whatever. Well, they had yeah, Joel they on the phone me. because they couldn't get him through the, the actual desk. They called me and it was just literally Tim holding a, a, the, the mic speaker up to, the, to his microphone so they could hear me. Mm. It was weird. Wow. Like, you know, it was Ricky Lee in the background. It was like the old days of community, community radio. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have no idea. It's above us to understand exactly what's going on. So we thought we'd bring in uh, Luke Provitz, who's our... What, what's your title here? You, you, I'm the technology manager. The tech manager, <laughs> yes. That's what it says on it's your business debut. card. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It is his debut, actually. Yeah. yeah now, you've, you've been us. to... Uh, you've, you've come to Japan with us, and, and you're responsible for making sure everything gets on air, like I'd see this morning, for example, in Paris. So what happened... Yeah, I'll be in, texting him. In layman terms, what happened on Friday? There was a file... Pushed out by a uh, so CrowdStrike is a, a massive a US-based cybersecurity company, mm-hmm. um, and they push out updates to uh, machines like your laptop or a lot of the broadcast machines in here. Um, we use CrowdStrike for some of our cybersecurity. They push an update that's one file that goes onto the computer. Windows doesn't like the file, and it, it breaks Windows essentially, so <laughs> we have to... Boot the machine, go in, find the file, delete it, and, and, and restart it. So that's most of the machines around here, and about half the user laptops. So when it first started, did you just think it was a radio problem? Like, do you think it was just specific to Nova? Well, yeah, actually, you know, we were... You started we, getting phone calls? We or? were actually at the transmitter, and we saw um, we have a, a system that a, a probes a lot of our other systems and tells us if, if, if they go down. Um, and it did. Suddenly we were getting alarms for hundreds of machines that had fallen off the network and we're going what the hell calling everyone mm. and then we reached out to some other people from other networks and you know they're having the same amount of fun that we're having <laughs> um, initially yeah. you think that like you, it was friday afternoon you were probably at drinks by then luke did you think oh my god what have i pressed <laughs> yeah that was about it i wished uh, i i thought what they, is, what is one could... of the stupid presenters pressed yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it true that southwest airlines by the way are so like antiquated with their technology that it somehow didn't affect them. They were the heroes last Friday, <laughs> the yeah. only airline that didn't get affected. <laughs> you know, funnily enough, it was the same thing that protected uh, Brisbane Studios. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? It was just uh, well, our. Well, this is from like the seventies. Antiquated. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's um, uh, the uh, just just being old enough on an older version of Windows um, <laughs> really? that protected it from the Windows update. 93, I think it is. And, and is it was it a deliberate act? Because that, like, I mean, it's caused mayhem, or yep. was it just an honest mistake? I saw. And what involvement, if any, did this Aussie have with it? It was, it was a mistake. It was a stupid mistake, and I don't know where the Australian fits in. Right. Yeah. Like, like, they could have tested the. Apparently, they were meant to test the virus thing before they sent it out to the whole world. I yeah, heard. Is that yeah. what you're saying? You're like, but they're like, oh, it'll be right. Some some degree of testing, oh. 
there could be any degree of testing just didn't happen. Yeah, Gary, you tested that uh, <laughs> that virus thing before you sent it out, didn't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's Friday. Yeah. I tell you what, though, because they're worried about cyber security, for, like in Paris right now for the uh, the Olympics. Uh, it's it's a bit of a wake up call that you know if, if someone did want to have a crack, then oh, yeah. you can do it on such a large scale. Well, you know what I started thinking. I started thinking, what if you're in the middle of say the hundred meter men's final? And the timing system went down, and it was a close yeah, finish. All the lights, and oh. all the lights, all. Do they have um, you know, secondary people like with manual timers? Yeah, but as if that's accurate. Uh, no, but I mean, but there's still pu- something. Pu- relying on Papa do. Giuseppe with his bloody um, little, little <laughs> handheld Seiko. Papa watch. Giuseppe. <laughs> Why is oh, the no, pizza going? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Papa Giuseppe. <laughs> is he here? That's Italian as well. I mean, that's, that's not even t- French. <laughs> hey, the Italian. Hey, the lights are out. Hey, pasta. The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. Alex, my daughter, has the weirdest connection, I think, with someone in the swimming team who's about to compete at the Olympics, and she's got a dilemma. Really? Alex, my daughter, is went to school and is really good friends with Lizzie Deckers, who is the highest rank, get this, because I was a Turner butterfly, is the highest ranked 200 butterfly in the team. She's ranked third in the world. Alex is, like... One of her best friends from high school is ranked third in the world in the 200 butterfly. I can't mm. believe Alex hangs out with a 200 butterfly. Wow, when that's that was bizarre. my that's, that's bizarre, did, isn't didn't it? Did you have a moment? Was Lizzie Decker's the one that came over to your house once and just through pure coincidence, mm. Jessica Shipper was there as well? Yeah, a fellow 200 butterfly. She was and there. And world record holder. Yeah. She was there because um, Jessica's husband is an electrician and he comes and does our electrical work. Yeah. So Alex had a party, um, a school party. Oh, what grade was she in? She was pretty young. I'm going to say grade eight. And yeah, so Lizzie Deckers, who's, <laughs> who's an up and coming swimmer, comes over and loves the tournament butterfly. And I'm there, tournament butterfly. And Jessica Shipper is also there. So it's been a weird, <laughs> weird connection. So now, what's her dilemma? Well, Alex is over in Europe at the moment. Oh, um, we were there for a month, but then Alex and Bill, our son, stayed over there backpacking around. And she's in Portugal. And Alex rang me on the weekend and said, um, Oh, my other best friend from school is over there, Sophie. We're thinking about going to the Paris Olympics and watching <laughs> and watching Lizzie Deckers compete. And I'm immediately then I'm why like, not? well, immediately I'm like, oh, don't do that. That's like a waste of money. But then I'm thinking, well, she's already over there. Yeah, it's her best friend from school. Yeah, um, we should be able to get tickets. You can still buy tickets. You can still buy tickets wow. to the swimming. Yeah. To the swimming. To the swimming. You can still buy tickets to the swimming. What? They are so expensive. How I don't much? Know. 360 euros. For one night? Yeah, for one final night. It's Almost... actually not as bad as I thought oh, it was. Really? Yeah, I, I would honest. have thought it would have been more than really? that. Really? Yeah, what's that? I mean, you pay. You, what's 360 you pay, in Aussie dollars? 585. 500, yeah. 585. That's yeah. a lot. But I mean, you pay. Yeah. What do you pay for a rock concert these days you, or, or a festival? Mm. You know, you're paying I don't know. 250, 300 bucks for a festival. That's true. And mm. then. So, That's a once in a lifetime. Huh? Is it? Pal, Paris Olympic swimming. Oh, okay, I think I've talked her out of it, Alex. Do you think I should go back? Because you can. But even just to be in Paris, to be like, I'm so envious of Lutzi at the moment. Like, just to be there. I look, it's been a slow build for me, this Olympic Games, like mm. in terms of yeah. getting excited for it. And it's just now, I'm just starting to read stuff. And I'm, that sprint series on Netflix has got me so excited for the athletics. I'm always interested yeah. in the swimming, but now I'm like. I'm like, okay, it's going to go off. The Olympics, it always does. Remember how good it was yep. in Tokyo? Yeah. Oh, oh man. That's that's there was no one there, yes, too. No, no one was crowds. there. It was unreal. I didn't see it on TV because I was there. Oh, it was like, epic. But... <laughs> like when we won the, when we were going good in the swimming. Like, oh, yeah. yeah I don't reckon I've field. ever seen, like, like since 2000, that last Olympics. I don't think that, like, the nation has got behind the team mm. as much as what we did no. in Tokyo. And it's actually a really good time here, I think, in Australia, to watch it, which is what I said to Alex. You can come home and you can watch it. It's 4.30 in the morning. It's perfect. Are you talking yeah. her out of it because you know you'll have to pay for that ticket? No, I don't have to pay for it. She said Alex mm. will pay for it herself, and she said it'll cost her probably $1,000 to change her flight, the accommodation in the backpackers. You can still get accommodation in Paris too. There, there's a, <coughs> there's, the a bit of a, there's a bit of a feel that Paris has kind of done a little bit what happened on the Gold Coast for the 2018 mm. where people are getting the hell out of here. Like, I, I don't think that it's as busy no. as people thought it was going to be as far as restaurants, really? hotels, and even tickets That's where you can... Yeah, yeah. Like, some sports, you can get tickets a lot cheaper than that still. Really? Yeah. I remember when I went yeah. to the, um, the Athens Olympics in 2004, same thing. Yeah. It was almost like a... Well, not a ghost town. 
But he had a weird vibe all one. He got there mm. at the end of it, but yeah. Anyway, that's her dilemma. I told her not to do it, but maybe <laughs> you, <laughs> maybe I should change my mind. <laughs> yeah, like she's already there. Like she's already, oh, she's in well, Europe, and the Olympics. Olympics is just starting. Just watch it on TV. She'd crash at Lutzies. The Ash Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. The uh, the moon is still out as the sun is rising over the city, Suze. Oh, it was a second ago, but oh, now I'm gone. looking. It's gone. Full moon. Do you know what I? Yeah. I learned a really um, I learned a really obvious thing that everyone probably knows that I didn't. That one side of the moon is always dark, and one side of the moon is always light. <laughs> what <laughs> what are you that talking over the about? <laughs> it doesn't spin around. What are you talking about? It doesn't spin around. We all see the one side of the moon the whole time. Did you know that? The dark side of the moon. Yeah, and they found a cave on the dark side of the moon. I saw that. That they ah. think people could live in. That's really? what I found. That's when I found out there was only one side of the moon. One side of the moon yeah. we see. I, I know dark side of the moon because uh, that, that was that Pink Floyd album back in the day. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Is that how you know? Yeah, that's how I learned. That's how <laughs> I, I know because I went them. to school. <laughs> <laughs> the Ash Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. Smarter than Sue's. Back at 8, we play at 9am as well. Good time to take her on. I think she just spilled coffee all over herself. Yeah. <laughs> and she didn't know the moon uh, Suze. didn't spin. So, you right, Suze? Yep, good. You good? Mm, good. Is that a really expensive shirt that that coffee has just mm-hmm. spilled onto? Can someone get Sue well, some is it on wet your wipes? Shirt? Extremely That's expensive. That's an $800 shirt. Extremely it looks like a Kmart flannel. Do, can it I looks, leave? Or do I have to stay here? No, you f- wait till you, you feel the fabric you go take of that care one. Of it. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. yeah is it different? Step to, off. I thought oh, it was, step off. What thought have it was Anko. F- what has she done? It's, so- it's softer than silk. Wow. I'll just be too sexy. Oh, all right. That's not too. It's you go, 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 go. You're not going to be focused. Come on, get out of here. Yeah. She's that taking is a off. Soft shirt. Is this really unprofessional? A little bit. Europe. Yeah. You've derailed the show, soon. I think she's got a photo shoot today. Did she? Did I hear that earlier? Well, it's all confidential, apparently, but yes, I've heard from oh. Perth that she'll be figuring prominently over the next 24 hours in our uh, in our news. Let's just say that. Did you say Perth? Related. No. Oh. Did I say Perth? Oh. I might have. I <laughs> don't think so. Anyway. No, I said in the news. Oh, She's okay. figuring prominently. Definitely said Perth. Um, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> If you say so. Quick, we need Sue's back. The show's yeah. falling apart. Well, do you want me to tell you what I was going to? What I was going to? Yeah, talk go about? ahead. All right. So, yeah. Lutzi, you're like this. Um, my brother on the weekend, he emceed the the mayoress ball down on the Gold Coast. What's that? What's that? It's like I guess it's the the ball that the mayoress puts on, right. which is what Tom Tate's wife, I guess. It's been going for like oh. ten, 10 years that she has a string of charities that she supports and evidently they get together once a year. And it's so she's a, the mayoress? Well, I guess so, yeah. I think title. it's called the mayoress's ball. I think that's the official name of it. Lady mayoress. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Luke found himself emceeing it and they raise money through the night. And I think Luke has said, just to add context to uh, one of the donations that I'm about to tell you about, that in the 10 years they've been doing it, I think they've raised $2.5 million. Oh wow! So they're averaging wow. about two fifty a year, and all these uh, charities. She are does supported. great charity work. The yeah. Lady Maris, great. So uh, this is Gold Coast. I'm talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. okay. But we assume that she does great work <laughs> down there as well just as like here okay, in though. Brisbane. Yes. Yeah, you missed that when you were cleaning your shirt. To get her off, by the way. Your yeah, eight hundred dollar yeah. flannel. Yeah. 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 Anyway, she said um, on the weekend at this uh, ball, uh, there was a donation that came through for one million dollars. One million. On the night. And Luke's like, what? One million dollars? And guess who it was that donated the million? Oh, can I guess? Yeah, go on. Susie. Gina Reinhardt. Uh, no, <laughs> no, Gina no Reinhardt. but a mining magnate. Who's the Andrew other? Twiggy. No, Forrest. Forrest. No. Uh, no. A, no. A mining magnate. Our wagon. very own colourful. Clive. Clive. Palmer. Clive Palmer. Of course. Do- donated a million dollars. And uh, anyway. That's, that's good. So, so Luke's... Luke's uh, found himself sitting with Clive at one stage during the night. Luke goes to him, says, uh, oh, good on you, Clive, you know, a uh, million bucks, geez. That's um, that's a huge donation. And he reckons Clive c- could care less. Like, he, Clive was like, yeah, 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 it's a good, it's a good charity, you know. You know, she does good work. Um, and wow. And uh, Luke said it was just like it was going nowhere. And then Luke said to Clive, he goes, hey, Clive, 
I was talking to Greg Bird the other day. Remember the former Origin player, Greg, oh, yeah, Greg yeah. Bird, New South Wales? And Greg Bird now is the coach of the Southport Tigers rugby league team on the Gold Coast. And mm. as soon as he mentioned, and he said, I was talking to Greg Bird the other day. He's coaching Southport Tigers. Clive's eyes light up. And Luke goes, did you play for the Southport Tigers, Clive? And Clive goes, yeah, I was a winger. No. I was a winger for the Southport Tigers, and then with all the pride in the world, he mm. says, do you know what they? You know what that grandstand is called at Owen Park? Mm. And Luke goes, no, he goes, the Clive, o- uh, Clive Owen, Cl- the Clive Palmer grandstand. Really? They named the grandstand after me. And then and Luke goes, where'd you go to school? And Clive goes, well, I went to school at Southport State High School. Did he? I didn't know that. No. And he goes, and guess what? I had the 400 metre athletics record for the school for 50 years. What? The record, what? the 400 metre record for Southport State High, he held for 50 years. And, and he reckons it was beaten last year mm-hmm. by some kid who beat the record by 0.01 of a second. Jeez. Have we got any photos of Clive when he's I went looking for that. No. Younger? No, no, An athlete. Yeah, he was a good athlete. Suze. A great athlete. Suze, he held oh, the school. Good athlete. He, Suze, that's, that's a pretty <laughs> bloody good effort. Like, out of every kid that's yeah. come through, that's a major high school on the Gold Coast. Mm. And a 50-year record is pretty huge at this day and age. What a time record. it did out of interest. Mm. Well, I bet you he'd know because Luke reckons that, like, he, his face just completely lit up. Like the million dollar donation couldn't care less. Yeah, but wow. talking about his old footy career and the fact that he held that record for fifty years. He tried to ring Israel Fralau back to the Southport Tigers. Yeah, I'm mm. sick in that. Yeah, he did. I remember that's that. Right. Now. Yeah, yeah. As pictures well. of him. Wow, that's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And, and, all... I, and I love the fact that he's got a billion dollars. Like he can buy anything that he wants in the world, but he is spewing <laughs> that he lost that record to that kid. <laughs> the Ash Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. Grant from Slacks Creek, you've got about two minutes left. Oh, come on, Grant. Mortgage Monday or part of our $100,000 oh. pay your bills. So give us a call, mate. Slacks Creek. Ring. Grant. Yeah. Grant. Mm. If you come know a Grant in Slacks Creek who has a mortgage. Get uh, on the phone to him. Let him know. Two minutes. Now, yeah. let's fill in a bit of time here. I, I was just telling the story about how my brother was uh, with Clive Palmer over the weekend, and Clive Palmer was telling him that not only did he used to play on the wing for the Southport Tigers in rugby league, mm. and they've named the grandstand after him, <laughs> but he went to Southport State High School and he held... Luke, Luke said that Clive reckons he held the 400-metre record, athletics record, at the school. He ran a mean 100 and 200. I've been reading about him during the song. The, he was the one and the two. Well. Yeah, well, a winger yeah. in rugby league, but he held the yeah. 400 record for 50 years until last year when Luke said Clive reckons some guy beat it by 0.01 of a second <laughs> or something like that. And the dad, Troy, has rung in, was listening, and this is your boy that broke Clive Palmer's record, Troy. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, morning. That's right. That's right, Ash. It was actually a few years ago, 2019, just before COVID. He uh, he did. He, he beat him. He went to South Island, all, all of his high school, and he beat Clive Palmer's record. Well known back at the time it was that Clive Palmer held the record for a very long time. Was it a record that people, like every year, were like, oh, i got to try and get this record? Yeah. And like your son had really um, targeted it? I certainly knew but with, with Clive's fame that, uh, that he was something he wanted to do, and he's a budding athlete, so he was chasing it Susie for sure. Is he? Uh, what's, what's your son's name? Yeah. His name's Oliver Marr. He trains with here on the coast with Mark Ladsbrook, who went to the uh, the Olympic Games. This thing was in the nineties as a four hundred yeah. meter runner. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and did he beat it by, like they said, by yeah, point zero one of a second? Well, the thing is, Ash, it's all hand time, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All hand time back in the seventies when Clive was there, and even even now in the two thousands, it's still still. Yeah. Well, it was only marginal, yeah. They, yeah they, only just they had a thing where you needed three stopwatches um, back then for for it to be considered a record. So they must have had three handheld stopwatches because I know a couple of dad's records. He told me that that like um, that nudgy that you had to have the three people there. What what time was it? Do you remember? All right, it w- would have been 48, which isn't flash, you know, 48, 40, early 49. But see, um, yeah. 
Well, mate, he's well, got something. Your son's got something that a billionaire really wants back, <laughs> and, and he can't buy it for all the money in the world. I don't think so. Clive's going to run that time these days. No. Is he? He, no. he reckons he got, he reckons he put on weight when he retired, Clive. He got bored and put on weight. I was just reading it during the song. Then, so, so don't retire if you want to keep your your sprinting body. Is the message there? Yeah, that's it. And, and Oliver having more front. These young fellas. He got in touch with Clive and said, "I got your record. You reckon you could sponsor me?" And Clive's <laughs> people said. Guys, people said, no, put a business plan together, we might think about it, but yeah. haven't heard since. Oh, that's so. cool. oh really? Well, oh, I'll tell you what, he is sponsoring an athlete up in Townsville called Jake Doran, coached by Paul DeBella. So he is actually contributing, uh, Clive, we should say that as well. Yeah. Oh, I'll say good, well done to your son, yeah. first Troy Oliver. Good on him. Got Grant here from Sucks Creek, just in the nick of time, Grant. Oh, what? Yeah. Gee, Where what happened, you? mate? Oh, talk about just getting in before the buzzer. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> sleeping in, your friends weren't giving you the, the, the inside word. What happened? Why weren't you listening? No, I was, I'm was. i at work and I just was busy and then I literally heard the call when you said there was two minutes to go. Oh, my God. Oh, wow, that's lucky, isn't it? You're already at, at work. What do you work as? Uh, making mattresses at Parkinson. So if you need a good mattress, head on down. Well, there we go. You've got your mortgage paid and a plug for your business. Well done, mate. Yeah. Fantastic. Three, Thank you so much. 3584 bucks. Well done. Legends. We go pace to be listing, literally, doesn't it? Literally. Pay your bills. $100,000 worth of bills we have to pay for fine people of Brizzy. The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. I'm smarter than <laughs> Smarter than Zeus. Brighton Homes are now offering up to $35,000 cash back on their homes. You don't need to be smarter than Zeus to live brighter and save more with Brighton. All right, David out of the switch works in finance. Hi, finance. How yes, are uh, you guys this morning? You're not 6'5 well. with blue eyes, are you, David? <laughs> Sorry, what was that? It doesn't matter. <laughs> You're very good today, Buzz. Thank you. Who were you stuffed yeah. around by that global outage on the weekend? On, yeah, on yeah, it was, a good, uh, it was a good, a good way to not work for the day, which was, which was nice. Oh, that worked out well, good for you. You get the day off. Yeah. Have they got it back yeah. together? Is everything working today? Yeah, yeah, it looks like it's all up and running again, unfortunately. Spew! <laughs> oh, well, 300 bucks, mate. And as I said, a ticket into the draw for the BYD at 03. So let's rip into it. We're playing again at 9 o'clock if you missed out right now. 30 seconds on the clock, and your time starts. Now, cilantro is the American word for which herb? I uh, don't know. What is the Australian surfing team called? Oh, don't know. Channel 9's Tipping Point is hosted by which former tennis player? Uh, don't know. <laughs> what is the primary language of Brazil? Uh, Spanish. What is 51 minus 11? Yeah, 49. Stop, stop. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Have your Lutzies left in that, I reckon, David. Uh, what did you have as a final well. answer? 49. Do we accept that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. just. Okay. Uh, and just with an official Lutzies yeah, on the, the Lutzies clock. In it. Oh, it might be enough, mate. I don't think it will be. I'm going to be honest with you. Probably but... not. <laughs> Let's find out. Let's bring in the gimp. So they say, bring in the, bring in the, bring in the, bring in the gimp. Whoa, bring in, bring in, bring in the gimp. They say, bring in the, bring in the, bring in the, bring in the gimp. Whoa, bring in, bring in, bring in the gimp. Susie O'Neill, hold the phone, Freddie. Ready, Mm Suze? 30 seconds on the clock. Your time starts now. Cilantro is the American word. Coriander. What is the Australian surfing team called? The Irukandjis. Channel 9's tipping point is hosted by which former tennis player? Uh, Oh, Togwa Bridge. What is the primary language of Brazil? Uh, Portuguese. What is 51 minus 11? Uh, 40. Stop the clock. 
Oh, She's I met a Brazilian. Good. I met a Brazilian when I was away. Did you? In Venice. And <laughs> she wow. told me what language she learned because she learned English by watching movies. She le- she lived in Brazil. And oh, yeah, I, wow. I said, was it Portuguese or Spanish there? And I can't remember her answer. But she learned her English by watching movies. She had excellent English. Uh, <sighs> well, let's start from the bottom. We'll get to that one pretty quick. 51 minus 11. David. You're a shot duck at this point, my friend. You said 49. <laughs> Sue said 40. Sue's is correct. Mm. The primary language of Brazil, David said Spanish, mm. and Sue said Portuguese. Yes. Portuguese yes, is Sue's correct. Right. Oh. Yeah. Portuguese. 2 0, Sue's. Channel 9's tipping point is hosted by which former tennis player? You didn't know that, Dave. Sue said it was Todd Woodbridge. That's correct. It's 3 0. The Australian surfing team is called the Irukandjis. Aren't they, can't they sting you? They're the, the, the sting things, aren't they? Yeah, they're those yeah. nasty little buggers. I saw them netting them up off um, Fraser Island mm. recently. It is a weird oh, name. Really? It's a dangerous name. Yeah, so it's 4 nil to Sue's, and cilantro is also coriander. Look, Sue's blitzed it. She got a perfect score. David, <laughs> mate, I know you work in, um, in finance. How are they going to feel when you come in there this morning and you, you know, you've got to, you got to do a pants run, mate? Well, my concern is more that it's eight degrees and I'm already getting my pants off. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a good. short change, more way than one. Mate, yeah. You're, uh, yeah, you've been blitz 5 nil. Sorry, not your day, but to the car. No. To the car. <laughs> I'm looking for a man in finance with trust fund. Six five, blue eyes. Yeah, he's got it all, hasn't he? Um, <laughs> now, what have I got here for you? I've got a um, $100 Maggie May voucher. Uh, Maggie May at Gasworks. You'll absolutely love it there, mate. It's a fantastic spot. Um, uh, awesome. and, and just And then you can make a night of it. Then I'll send you from there to um, to uh, Hey Chica on the Brunswick Street Mall. $100 voucher for there as well. We can get tacos, tequila, margarita. You name it, they've got it, mate. It's one of the best spots in town. So, uh yeah. Enjoy. Fantastic. Thanks. There we go, David. Have You're a good also day. in the draw for that uh, BYD 803. The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. The weekend was so good. Like, weather-wise, I know, I know it was windy. It was windy. Mm, it was windy. But it was blowing a westerly wind. And down on the Gold Coast, the, oh, the, the coastline at the moment, it's magnificent. Spectacular, like glassy. The, 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 there's not big swell, but it's just glassy and crystal clear water, mm. and um, beautiful sunsets and mm. the full moon last oh, night. Yes, true. Like if you haven't been down the coast to check out the beach at the moment, you're missing out. Mm. It's spectacular, and you don't get too burnt too. No, I no it's a good. day trip. Speak maybe. for yourself, there, love. <laughs> yeah, well, oh yeah, I still get sunburnt. What's it like in Paris? How many degrees is? Is it hot during the day? I uh, got up to about 26, I think, today. So it's just, it's good. It's perfect it's, temperature, uh, isn't it? Sweet spot. Yeah. Because it's, they're talking uh, about. I think... oh. Sorry, there's no aircon in the village, but I think that'll be fine. Don't you think? I don't think it matters. I like, don't I've, think I've got the aircon on in my room at the moment, but I opened the window before, and it's just this nice sort of temp. Yeah. Bit of a breeze, you know. Mm. Um, there's a bar downstairs, actually, I can do the show from if you want me to. No, oh. thanks. It wasn't even related Maybe. to what we were talking about. I just wanted to work that in. Yeah. Maybe 8.30. What's that got to do with the temperature? <laughs> <laughs> I love that our athletes... I just thought about the bar, to our, be honest with you. Our athletes don't have air conditioning, but thank God, the ground announcer at Stade de France, <laughs> he can bring it down to a nice 15. His new Billy. He sleeps better that way. His voice will be well rested. The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. The Prince is on. Jealous of Mitch this morning. Jealous, yeah. jealous, jealous. Yeah, it's it's pretty nice in here, Susan. I'm not going to lie, because I I didn't know what I was getting up to on the street today. And I walk in, and producer Lockie says, "By the way, you're having a sauna." And uh, it seemed too good to be true, because it was about six degrees when I arrived at work this morning. Mm. And uh, currently, I'm sitting in one of their infrared saunas here at uh, City Cave at Everton Park. It's 49 degrees uh, in here. It's beautiful. Uh, it was nice, and you know, I kept myself warm in the drive here. Very cold on the way out, and then uh, it's beautiful. It's relaxing, and um, Are you this is about yourself? as good as it gets. Is it a sauna? I am at the moment, yeah. 
But, you know, you are right. Like, I mean, you sort of can see how this can be a one one person thing. You can sort of lay back a little bit, stretch the legs out and keep it solo and make it a nice little intimate experience with yourself. But, uh, you know, you can probably fit three people in here, I'd say, if you're sitting <laughs> side by side. I'm actually going to do that right now. Hey, uh, uh, Tim, you want to come and join me here, mate? Something's obviously running things down here. Uh, mate, if you want to uh, just take your shirt off, if you'd like, and join me there, mate. <laughs> what, uh, can I ask Tim? what you're wearing? Are you wearing togs? Uh, no, well, that's the thing as well, because I didn't know what I was doing. I am just dressed in my, uh, my the shorts that I was wearing, and um, yeah, it's not really sauna uh, sort of ap- appropriate. Yeah, you're getting topless. I mean, I'm going to be in here for a while, because Tim, you were saying this isn't like a traditional sauna. You can actually spend a little bit extra time in these ones. Yeah, absolutely. It's much better than the uh, traditional sauna. You know, most people are familiar with the traditional Scandinavian saunas, where you walk in and it's just yeah. super hot straight away. You know, you're normally in there for 10 to 15 minutes and you've got to jump out. Uh, with an infrared sauna, it actually slowly heats you up and it works on heating you from the inside out. Um, so the infrared rays penetrate your skin by uh, three centimetres. So it helps break down all of your visceral fats and all of those nasty fats that sit around all of your organs. So really good for you. You Ooh, comfortably s- to lose. Mate, they absolutely are. And we all struggle with it, to be honest. Um, but I think uh, you can quite comfortably sit in here for a good 45 minutes and it's a nice so, mental detox as well. So do you sweat as much as a traditional sauna? Because, yeah, I, I've only done it once. Like, like Susan, I, I didn't sweat as much as what I would in a normal sauna, but uh, am I still getting the benefits if I'm not sweating? Yeah. Absolutely. So when you're in here, you're sweating out all the uh, skin, all the toxins that just sit under the surface of your skin. Um, and there is a misconception with saunering where it's like the hotter it is, the better it is for you. But it's actually not right. the case. The goal is just to get a nice light sweat on and, um, and yeah, work it from the inside out. You normally find from an infrared sauna, you stay warmer longer after the session as well. So it's perfect this time of year to come in. A lot of people it's think really Monday's probably hairy. the perfect... Does the sweat droplets stay oh. on the hair or how does that work? Yeah, it does. And luckily we're not coming to you via video today because you should see Mitch. He's absolutely <laughs> soaking wet. <laughs> oh. yeah. you know this? Every it's day quite... we get to see Mitch and where he is and the one day he takes his shirt off yeah. and jumps into a sauna, they rob us the of the vision. I'll send, you, I'll send you some photos. Would you mind? <laughs> yeah, you. no, no worries. Um, I just say Monday's probably a perfect day as well to, to get into something like this because a lot of people, they have a big weekend. It's in and they go, you know what, I'll just jump in a sauna on Monday morning. I'll sweat it all out. I dare say these ones are probably even better if you're trying to, uh, you know, wash away your sins from the last couple of days. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. We get a lot of people coming in Mondays and Tuesdays with that uh, that ailment. Yeah. <laughs> and are these ones popular too? Because like they, they kind of promote it as being like a one-person sauna. We're obviously very comfortably fitting two in. And I think some of the things that maybe put people off saunas, if they do have to get topless or, or whatever, is going into a big room with a lot of other strangers. You're finding this is very popular because people can come and enjoy it themselves. Yes, Ash yeah. that. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, like us today, it's nice sitting here in our birthday suit. You want to actually mm-hmm. not just take off your, your T-shirt. You want to be fully nude. And, you know. um, and it's just really nice. You know, it's your own private space. And, and we really encourage couples to come in and use the sauna as well. It's a really nice activity, a nice healthy activity to do as a couple. And what even personalise it even more to the right of mine. Sorry, Ash, there's actually a thing where you can actually hook up your own uh, device to, to play your own music or podcasts or whatever so you can actually listen to your own music while you're as well. Yeah, yeah, and we've got some great podcasts that we recommend. Ash you know, and Susie O'Neill obviously being right yeah. at the top oh, there. Obviously, yeah. that's, <laughs> the, pre- that's, that's yeah. the preferred one. Um, second to that is a lot of sauna-based Good ones. So you can, yep. you, know, you can be learning a lot about saunering while you're in here, which is really cool. What, what's Beautiful. the go with the float pools? Have you got those? Mm. those the, what happens there? Mate, the float pools are awesome. It's the thing that's kind of made us famous. So we've uh, built some proprietary float pools. So it's like an open float room. Um, I'm sure that you guys would have seen float pods. They're like in a little capsule. Yeah. Um, a lot of guests were uh, suggesting to us in the early days when we had one location and uh, they said they didn't want to get in them because they were really claustrophobic and people yeah. are coming in to look after their mental health. The last thing they want to have to do is overcome a barrier of entry. So um, we decided to build our own float rooms, which are really beautiful. Like a lot of people, you know, post about it um, organically on social media because they just look so great. Uh, and it's another couple service that we promote with people coming in, another healthy thing for people to do as a couple. I don't think there's enough of that out there, enough options. 
Yeah, nice. And it's not just me getting to enjoy this, guys. I've actually got uh, some experiences, double sauna as well, in there. Uh, if you want to give us a call, 13 24 10 right now, and uh, we can get you out here. City Cave at Everton Park, and just to, uh, and to enjoy everything that they've got that we've just talked about and much more. And um, treat yourself, Tim. That's what it's all about here, coming out here and look after yourself amongst everything so else good. that's going on. And we're going to get back to that, guys. So if you'd, uh, you just enjoy. wrap up, Tim and I having a good morning together. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks, guys. There we go. Citycave.com.au if you want to go book that for yourself or 13, 24, 10. The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. Joe ba- Biden uh, announced, announced overnight a uh, bombshell announcement on social media. He released a letter saying he's going to stand down for the presidential nomination. Um, so we've got Miley Hogan, who's over in the US at the moment, to take us through exactly all the ins and outs of that. Hi, Miley. How are you going? Good morning. Yeah, so shock announcement. Everyone's been sort of pushing him to resign, haven't they? And he finally tipped over the edge. What do you think the final straw was that got him to um, not go for the election? Look, guys, it'll be interesting to hear Joe Biden talk about this. He did say in his statement that later in the week he will address the nation because you have to remember, Joe Biden has COVID at the moment. So he's in his beach house in Delaware, isolating. He's been there since Wednesday. But age has been such a big issue right through this election season. But it was that... It was that debate that really put a lot of focus on his age. It was an alarming performance from Joe Biden. He lost his train of thought. There were a lot of pauses. And that really ramped up the debate about whether or not he had the stamina to continue not just the campaign, but to go right through for another four years. And we saw this huge amount of public pressure for him to step aside. It was coming from donors and a number of top Democrats, but also from people within his own party as well, who had been elected, asking him to stand aside. And we even saw that grassroots campaign television ad that went out saying it was time for him to pass the torch. And then today we've had this statement from him saying that he would not be pushing ahead with this election race. Was it really a shock? Because given that uh, the performance in the debate, it was so bad. He he didn't come off well at at all. There was a lot of speculation. I think George Clooney stepped out of the woodwork too and said, you've got to step down. Was it... and And I saw some footage too this morning of Donald Trump like a couple of months ago saying, look, Biden, he won't be there when the whips are cracking, not that he used those words, but he said Biden will step down. Was it kind of expected that it would happen or has it come as a major shock to everyone in the States? Look, I think a lot of people towards uh, the end of the last few weeks have been thinking that this was going to happen. It wasn't a matter of uh, if, but when. But, I mean, I've been covering it from the beginning and I've been flip-flopping myself every day because Joe Biden will come out quite strong and say, I'm staying in this race. I'm in it to win it. We saw him be so defiant and he kept pushing on, saying, I'm staying in this race. It was only two days ago he put out a statement saying, I look forward to getting back to the campaign trail next week just yesterday and the day before his campaign managers were on tv saying joe biden is in this race he's our nominee pushing and pushing the message that he was going to run and then today he has now put out this statement saying he's not so while he's been in isolation it appears that he's uh, been having those conversations with his close allies with his friends his family about whether or not he should continue and he's come to the decision that he cannot what's going to happen from here he's um backed kamala harris camilla harris to be his um to be nominated for president, but will she be the the nominee? Well, they have to go through a process now, and at the moment, Joe Biden has endorsed Kamala Harris. At this stage, no one else has put their hat in the ring. There'll be the delegates now who will vote for who they want. They have about four weeks to do that before the Republicans have their national convention. You might remember Donald Trump and the Republicans just had theirs as well. So that's the process that the uh, Democrats will go through. At this stage, it looks like Kamala Harris will be the uh, is the only nominee, but that's very early days. This is all happening just in the last few hours, so we'll have to keep an eye on it to see what happens. Uh, but I know that Michelle Obama repeatedly has rejected the idea of running for president, but they still have thrown her name around. Do you think this will potentially put her in a position where she could have a crack? Look, this is a question that we get asked all the time, and she's made it very clear that she's just not interested and she will not be running. Oh. Right. I presume this yeah, we'll improves. Next through that. I presume this improves Trump's chances of winning the election. Yeah, do you reckon? I reckon it will. Don't you? What? What's, what are they saying in the polls, Miley? 
oh, look, it'll it'll come down. It'll be, they'll have to start putting out some more attack ads. I'm sorry, guys. I've got to have to jump off there. But thanks so much for Thank your you, time. Thank you, Miley. There we go. Miley uh, Hogan over there in the US. You are the last. Yep, thank you. Seven News US correspondent. I hope Miley's all right. <laughs> the Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. Have you guys been bungee jumping? Oh, no. Anyone no, here? I haven't. Yeah, I I've done a, it a I couple of times. I did the swing <laughs> in New Zealand, but not bungee. Have you done it, Ash? I've done it a few times. I did it when I was uh, like really young, and then I've done it a couple of times over the years. I, I've done a fair few skydives as well. Like, oh, yeah? Like tandem skydives, never one by myself. Mm. And I... I reckon that it takes way more kahunas to jump off the bungee jump mm. than it does to jump really? out of the aeroplane. Because you're closer and it's more real. And also, it, when you're doing a, uh, like to, to jump out of an aeroplane, it's a bizarre experience and it is it is scary. It gets the adrenaline going. But you've also got like the guy, the, the person who's strapped to you. Who's strapped to you and they're kind of making the decisions and so you're going mm. along. With the bungee jump, you have to commit to jumping off and also when you skydive you free fall you can't it's not as if the earth is racing up at you no you don't feel the when you when you do a bungee jump it's perspective. it's literally like I, I did it the Just first the, one I did was at the Broadwater on the Gold Coast years ago and you dive and they adjusted it so that your head would just touch the water uh-huh. and then you'd mm. shoot back up but you'd literally see no way. the, the water much, coming at it? you like that. You'd got to. you have to give them your exact weight, wouldn't you? What if you lied about your weight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is not 82 to... kilo. And then, like, Don't lie now, not son. not the time to lie Ooh, about your weight. Yeah. Well, there's this bungee jump because I would never, I would never, you couldn't pay me enough money to go bungee jumping nah. or skydiving. You know, it suits you know what my mum says. She says yeah. that it's bad for your eyes. It is. It is bad for your eyes. I've heard that. My husband told me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, make, it can make your retinas yeah. pop out. Can it? Well, I, <laughs> what a way to go. <laughs> but um, they've got this bungee jump in China that I might be able to do. Where? Well, no. Okay, hang on. Come on, boss. China. Sorry, yeah. In China. I don't it's, know the story. It's bungee jumping for cowards. But I reckon it'd still be just as scary <laughs> because you tell me the, the scary part of what actually is bungee jumping. Because you still have to step off. You still have to step off over, you know the height but then it lowers you slowly so you go i've seen a video of it and actually we'll put it up on our instagram but it kind of goes slowly for a bit but then it kind of just lowers you you know <laughs> to whatever where it's going to the water and then it pulls you back up again well, so you like jump an onto an a platform or something it's, uh, it's exactly like you ever got a video that we can yeah see? the video is um I'll we'll throw it up on our socials ash Lutzi and susie i just so had you it can... here before but basically yeah, it lowers you so it's like bungee jumping you just don't go up and down you're like you, you still got to jump off and then it just goes and that's that's your bungee jump, hmm. but it's still over a massive height, so I reckon it'd still be. Oh, I see. Uh, right, and then they're just kind of lowering you down. You still, still, still got to make that leap of faith. Do you know the one mm. that I reckon is is the scariest of them all? Yeah, is uh, and man, then in comparison, it, but I reckon you know that giant drop that they've got at Dreamworld. Oh yeah, I would never go on that. That thing there, you go really? up there and you no. you you. you, you you're sitting on the seat and you can feel your legs just dang, <laughs> just dangling and they leave you there. And you don't know you don't know when it's gonna drop. No. And it yeah. does drop initially just in free fall. Yeah. And you know that thing where your stomach like whatever that is? Yeah, what is that? Yeah, and it's like it all lifts. But that's like that the, the water slide one's like that too at one of those parks. Yeah. Where was that at? Where you're on a platform and it just pulls away, doesn't Wet it? Wet and wild, I think, has yeah, got you that. Just, yeah. <laughs> It's the Second anticipation the that kills you. Yeah, the waiting for in that. it. Yeah. But I reckon that I could probably do, if they brought that to Australia, I would give that a go if someone paid me enough money. It's pretty lame. Oh, it's, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, it's gonna take, it's still going to take a, a lot of money. pretty much getting in a lift. Okay, but she, 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 yeah. it's like getting in an elevator, yeah. <laughs> Says we'll do Dancing with the Stars followed by a cowardly bungee jump. Yep. Yes. <laughs> the Ash Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. Uh, can I quickly mention that Bell story, guys? Um... The uh, the Stade de France is the venue I'll be working at at the Olympics. Uh, rugby sevens uh, for the first sort of uh, six or seven days, starting this Wednesday. In fact, 11 p.m. Australia versus Samoa is the first ga- game. That's Australian time, Brisbane time, uh, on Wednesday, two days before the opening ceremony. So you can catch that. And then the Stade de France has the athletics in week two of the Olympics. Uh, a great stadium, but there was a uh, at the moment the uh, the track 
which is a purple track they're running out on here in Paris. It looks fantastic. Is covered by a, a deep purple sort of carpet, if you like, uh, for the rugby sevens around the around the other uh, field. And just at the one end of the at the northern end, I think it is of the um, of of the field where the carpet is at the moment. There's a huge bell, almost exactly the same size as the bell we have. Um, uh, for smarter than Sue's and blah blah blah, the bell that we got, got off the Susie O'Neill ferry, mm. uh, and I said to the guys today, I said, "What is that bell just sitting there for?" And what it is is during the rugby. Uh, when teams win a game, they get to run over and ring the bell, kind of like we do. And during the athletics for Olympic champions, when they win their event, they can get over, go over and ring the bell as well. And that bell at the completion of the Olympics, and I presume the Paralympics as well, will be the bell that goes into the recently restored Notre Dame Cathedral. Oh, cool. Wow. Oh, Wow. Where How they cool put, is that? That is, is it, awesome. Is it from that cathedral? Have they taken it from? I, I don't know whether it was the OG bell that obviously, because it got well, it got damaged by fire a couple of years ago now, and mm. they've been restoring it, and it's almost back at full restoration apparently. I haven't been down there yet, but uh, the bell will go in. I'm not sure, Ash, whether it's the existing bell, but it's – I haven't looked at it close up, but it looks like it's not that much bigger than the, the bell we have in the studio from the from the ferry. Wouldn't have been the one in the spire, would it? I actually did go down to Notre Dame when I was there a week or so ago. Did you? And uh, it'll be finished at the end of the year. There's a big grandstand up that people just sit there and watch it being repaired. Really? Really? It's so bizarre. Yeah, you you, sit, you can sit there and just – I'm like, what's everyone doing? Because we were there on our bicycle tour and the guy goes, they're just watching it being repaired. I was like, wow. Because it was a few years ago that that yeah, cathedral burnt down. Year. I had a friend that was there. They still don't know why it, it burnt. more than two years. They don't really know oh, why easily. it was burnt down, do they? It was being repaired and then all of a sudden it's up in flames. Yeah, and it, it must have fallen behind schedule because they clearly would have wanted to have it yeah. fixed before the Olympics start. Yeah, that and um, the Eiffel Tower were their two biggest tourist attractions in Paris. Really? Notre Dame's number two. Well, what about that, the old Champs Elysees? Twenty nineteen, uh, the fire was. Mm. FYI. Mm. Yeah, good question. Yeah, so the Notre Dame outranks the. <laughs> mm. Isn't it? I thought about that joint you told me to go to. Interesting. Near the, out near the Moulin Rouge. <laughs> near the Moulin Rouge. Oh, they keep that one top five, five, five isn't it? Months. I know that you would have been there by now. <laughs> He's no, I've been too busy. <laughs> oh, I see he buzz. He's been too. Come on, stop it. The Ash Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. Uh, ben Cousins. I think we were all a bit surprised when we went, what, Ben Cousins mm. is doing Dancing with the Stars? It's on every Sunday on Channel 7 and 7 Plus, and he joins us now from Perth, I assume. Good. Where, good. Where, how are you, mate? Good morning, guys. How are you? Good. Is it I, – I always forget, are you like two hours – in front of us or behind us? Is it like really early in the morning? Behind, un- behind unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, all good, mate. <laughs> How are you going? Like, Not too bad. Are you yeah. Are you healthy? And I mean, Have you seen him, Suze? Oh, you, we, we've always yeah, looked no, healthy. Yeah, done all right. Yeah, 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 life is good. Straight yeah. and narrow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well done. Congratulations. I've been following your career. Yeah, I, you're, you. We're athletes around the same time, obviously. I'm... Yeah, I'm slightly older yeah. than you, but uh, yeah, you've pulled through, haven't you? And you're reading the sport. He's only forty six. Well, I'm only fifty, Lutzi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not much in it. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, live to tell the tale so yeah. far. You're reading the sport over there, are you? And also now doing the dancing with the yeah. stars. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Mm. And what's the cool. um, what's the dancing with the stars thing like? We've spoken to people over the years, and they've they've gone. You know what? It's actually hard. It, like, it, come on! It, you, you think, oh, we're going to go dancing in the dancing competition? Like, and you're a former athlete. Don't tell me that there wouldn't wasn't a part going. Well, it can't be that hard. But like, how many, yeah, how many oh, hours you put in? Well, yeah, I, I didn't. I hadn't done any dancing before, but I, I knew I knew I was going to be. It was going to be tough. But yeah, in ter- I couldn't have done another hour of dancing. It really. Um, you know, just in terms of the time and the commitment to it, I, I was back living the life of a professional athlete. I really was. I wasn't moving like one, but I was living the life of one. Um, and just a lot of back-to-back days. Um, you know, I'd be at the studio putting my shoes on at nine in the morning uh, a lot of days, and I would dance from nine in the morning 
till five at night, and the <laughs> only month. time I'd be off the floor would be for 30 minutes at lunch. The only time. <laughs> oh it was God. quite incredible. And, wow. and more hours than I'd ever done playing playing footy. But, uh, you know, I've missed that life. So that side of it, I loved. And um, even the training was done in Melbourne, and then the shooting of it was up in Sydney. So whilst I was away from work and my kids and the family commitments, uh, they couldn't get to me either. So I was I was really? able to just train and eat and sleep. And it was cool for a while. Yeah, I loved it. Jeez, yeah. Does it correlate to dancing out on the dance floor when you go out, you know, are you better on the... Well, I haven't given it a good run yet, but I hope so. There's nothing else. I hope it's that's the takeaway. Um, but even just to um, to be dancing, you know, in the cold, hard light of day, really, um, you know, if, if I've done any dancing, it's probably been after six or eight beers. Um, <laughs> so even just all those inhibitions and uh, insecurities uh, that... I've carried around forever um, to sort of have to get over those and, and then find the enjoyment in in dancing. It's been great. It's been so good for me and I, I wish it had happened earlier. There's the whole thing of having rhythm, etc. But the other point, when we, a few years ago, I know Ash was, I think it was before you, Suze, but we did like some, um, we joined in some kids dance thing, that next gen, whatever it's called, um, and we had to yeah. remember like 30 seconds of choreography. And 30 honestly, seconds, yeah. I just couldn't get it. It took us weeks and weeks to get 30 <laughs> seconds. And I remember the only time I remember feeling anxious or, or like that was in my very limited uh, Queensland QAFL career for North Brisbane, uh, the Eagles, um, being afraid I was going to be the one that was going to stuff up Aussie Rules training drills. <laughs> And everyone else knew which way to go and who to handball to, and I was always at anxiety. And I actually thought that was kind of similar to dancing when we were trying to learn that quarry. Oh yeah, well you know the nerves and and the, the you know the anxiety um, can be paralysing, you know, and um, the performance side of it was really tough for me. Um, a lot of you kind people of got that had that. Um, act, act, acting or singing background, yeah. they are performers, and then when it's time to perform, they really do come to life. And uh, for me, that was a real stretch. Uh, you know, when I took 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 it on um, and, and agreed to do the show, I was I had. Um, sort of four or five weeks of training ahead of me, but I didn't want to think about the show. I didn't want to know who else was on it. I thought I've just got enough on my plate just to <laughs> worry about the dancing. But as it got closer, you know, uh, at times it would make me feel crook, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Um, that's, yeah, there's so many different layers to it. Uh, yeah. You know, I only scratched the surface, but um, it was it was cool um, learning about it, yeah. Hey, we were talking earlier in the show, we were mentioning we're going to have a chat to you later this morning. And I, like when I, I, I think of Ben Cousins, one of the things I think of is uh, I just went, such is life. <laughs> you know, you, like you, you probably yeah. possess one of the most well known slash famous tattoos. Well, I reckon the Home and Awake, the, they, the, they copied it, remember? They had something that the, yeah, the, like the, the River Boys. The River Boys. Yeah, they, they, they did like yeah. a watered-down poxy version of, of that, but that's such his life. <laughs> that, that is a Ned Kelly thing, isn't it? Is that why you put it there? Were you marking out to Ned? Uh, How did that come about? Well, I've always liked the, the legend of Ned Kelly, but yeah, well, it wasn't one of the smartest things I've done, but I've been fortunate <laughs> that I've made a few far greater... Um, blues over my time, so I haven't spent too much time worrying about that <laughs> yeah. one. There's been uh, others to worry about, but uh, yeah, it's just something that found me. Just mm. one of those things. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it amazing, though? Like, like, like what a colourful life, Ben. Oh, yeah. Lead the highs mm. and the lows, and I'm sure there would be a time not too far away where, you, you know, it is a great, they say you can judge the... You know, judge someone by the quality of their problems. You know what I mean. And if your biggest problem is a dancing competition, and you know you're falling a bit behind on the Paso Doble and whatever, it's, it's a lot better than other situations you've no doubt been. Uh, yeah. in. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'd take that. Yeah, I'd take the, the issues I've got on the dance floor over some of the ones I've had yeah. previous. But yeah, you know, um, yeah, life is good. You're um you're against some really good names too. I really want to watch this because I I've, I have always been a fan of yours, Ben. Even Who's through your um dance, I was like Nova Nova Paris, um, Shane oh, wow. Crawford. I love as well. Julie Goodwin, the Master Chef winner. Um, Samantha Jade, the singer. Who else have you got? Nikki Osborne, N- Nadia Bartel. Yeah, you got Aunt Middleton mm. from SAS. So many. Yeah, it was um it was a great cast. Uh, you know, I was really. 
I just really enjoyed the company that um, that I got to spend with those with the people, and I was really surprised at the um, the morale and the support, and um, it was just a really good feeling, you know, backstage or in the green room, and the guys in particular, you know, it, it was very much like a uh, a footy locker room. You know, we didn't stop laughing most of the time. It was it was at our own expense, but um, it was it was a lot of good humour. Yeah. Oh, well, it's on uh, every Sunday, as we said, Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> ben Cousins is out there dancing. Oh, it says, you, it says you, you, went, you didn't go too good in the first week of the competition. You narrowly escaped elimination. So well, you need it's to lift been your a game, rocky mate. start. Yeah, it's <laughs> been a rocky start. <laughs> well, you've bounced back yeah. before. Come on, you can do it. And uh, you can see yeah, him on Channel, Channel 7 News Perth as the sports presenter as well. Ben Cousins, great to chat to you, mate. Yeah, you too, guys. The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. I'm smarter than... Su, 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 su. I'm smarter than Sue. Sprite and Homes are now offering up to $35,000 cash back on their homes. You don't need to be smarter than Sue's to live brighter and save more with Brighton. Uh, Jules out of Redland Bay, come in. Good morning, good morning. How are you? Pretty good. It says you're, you're, you're spending the rest of the day making cakes. I am. I'm a cake maker. That's what I do. Oh, I was like, what's the... What you know, sort of cakes? What do you got coming up? But this is what you do every day, is it? It is. Yeah, it's my full-time job. Uh, today we've got uh, vanilla cake and red velvet and a chocolate as well that I'm baking today. Give your business a plug, Jules. Oh, my business is Sweet Treats by Jules. And I'm in Redland Bay, so servicing South Brisbane and Gold Coast. Well, Ooh. it's important to remember if you're thinking of making something for us that David famously <laughs> doesn't eat chocolate. Yeah. He'll eat so he'll eat white chocolate, isn't that correct, Lutzi? So, correct. That's fine. So red, That's yes. fine. I get weird chocolate. people sometimes. That's fine. <laughs> I can do uh, red velvet. There you go. There's no chocolate. Is, is that chocolate? Red velvet? Red, red velvet? No. Oh, it's got cocoa yeah. in. It depends if you if you like cocoa. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Don't. Hang on there after we do this, Jules, and we'll find out okay. the, the exact temperament we'll of Lutz's This cakes look awesome. Right. Just on else. Instagram. That vanilla one. That, yeah, I mean, you, surely you eat vanilla. vanilla. I'll be all over yeah, that. Come on, vanilla the vanilla. vanilla. Well, I'm, I'm about to do one for Channel 10, so you know I could do one for Nova as well. Oh, heck, <laughs> what, what are they celebrating over at Channel 10? What have they got? Oh, 60 years of something. Oh, okay. <laughs> what are you making them? What are they going for? Big, are they vanilla cakes? A big 60. Oh, a big six zero. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> Listen, we we'll work something out. Sweet treats yeah. by Jules, is that it? Yeah, it's on your Instagram. It looks awesome. Sweet treats by Jules. Yeah. Good luck, Jules. Thank Fir- you very much. First time performance, and uh, is it four hundred? Four hundred. Yep. Four hundred bucks. Here we go. Thirty seconds on the clock. Your time starts now. What is the primary alcohol used to make a mojito? Ah, uh, gin. Marky Mark is the stage name for which actor? Don't know. What's Australia's largest state or territory? Uh, Western Australia. Diplodocus and Allosaurus are types of what? Uh, dinosaur. Spell Sudoku. S U D U K O. Top got. Mm. Yeah, they're, they're tough. I mean, and what about Lockie, by the way, Jules? Like, it's a Monday morning. It's a Monday morning, the 9 o'clock, and he throws Diplodocus and Allosaurus <laughs> at me. And he knows that I don't pre-read the questions. He's so lucky that I just happened to glance over them before we started. But he's putting them in there deliberately. Make no mistake. <laughs> this kid, giggling this kid is putting right them in there deliberately on a Monday morning because he wants to catch me out. That, that's what's yeah, going well. on. Diplodocus, dip, isn't it? Dipl- what is it? Diplodocus and Allosaurus. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. what I'm going I'm just Please, going with yeah. it. <laughs> Let's bring in the gimp. Gimp! I said what I said. Don't say passe, don't know instead. Ray Warren gets stuck in your head. I don't care, I paint the town red. Gimp! I said what I said. None of these questions are pre read. Instant cash or cave instead. I don't care, I paint the town red. Nice work, Buzzman. Yep. I do not remember doing that. Hold the phone, Freddy! <laughs> What? 
Hmm? You're shaking your head. You look upset. Oh, I was shaking my head at Lockie then. Mate? Oh. oh God, we got beef. Oh, yeah. We got beef. What? Oh, uh, we'll take it off here. Okay. Uh, Nothing to do with the quiz. Well, let, let's just take care of business. Oh, okay, right. I'll bring you into the mix. Okay. <sighs> 30 seconds on the clock. <laughs> Your time starts now. What is the primary alcohol used to make a mojito? Vodka. Marky Mark is the stage name for which actor? Um, can't remember. What's Australia's largest state or territory? Queensland. Diplodocus and Allosaurus are types of what? Lego. <laughs> Spell Sudoku. S-U-D-O-K-A. Stop the clock. Oh, my oh God. Oh, no. Okay. What on earth? What on earth? You can tuko me here, and I didn't think we'd be saying this. You want a double oh, tuko? Give me a double tuko. Hey, hey, hey. Two, two, two. I felt yeah. bad. Bad, bad then. What is the primary alcohol used to make a mojito? Now, Sue said vodka. Jules, you said gin. Gin. I said gin. Correct answer. Rum. Rum. Bacardi. Rum. No, no. White rum, yeah. No, oh. is it white rum, is it? Mm-hmm. <sighs> uh, wow. Nil all. Really? Marky Mark <laughs> is the stage name for which actor? Now, this oh. one, I mean, I just had a tick right there from Mark the start. Wahlberg. We actually spent the whole of last week I know, I sending, know. We, we sent uh, Nick out uh, 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 at the start, and yep. then we sent Mitch out to track down the progress of Mark Wahlberg. Bruce and Teddy. The Farrelly Brothers. Dude, that's uh, paradise, too, Ash. And yeah. Wahlberg is there on the, on the beach front. I saw that. Yeah. I, I think he's been staying at the Langham down there, actually. I couldn't find it straight oh, away no. in my head, so I had to had to give it away. Had to I bail knew, out. Had to bail. Mark did, Wahlberg. Did Jules get no, it? No, Jules missed that as well. Phew. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Diplodocus and Allosaurus are types of what? What was your answer, Susan? Like, Lego. I was Lego. Thinking about that Diplo. <laughs> I thought it was a trick question. Uh, du- Duplo. Duplo. <laughs> Duplo. <laughs> you said uh, Lego. I don't know why that made me laugh, but it did. Uh, Jules said dinosaurs. Oh. And dinosaurs is correct. Of course. Well, That's my beef with Lockie, by the way. Monday morning, he knows He knows Monday mm. morning I'm vulnerable. <laughs> and so he throws in Diplodocus and all the sores. No warning. No. Hey, you might want to pre-read this one, Ash. Well, he puts it as question four, knowing yeah. that if you do pre-read, yeah. you probably won't get that far down the list. Yeah. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Look, I know what you're doing, mate. That's funny. Uh, it it's one nil to Jules. Oh no! Spell Sudoku. Oh, Sudoku. No. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce. <laughs> you can't even say it. Mate. Sudoku. What is it? I got that wrong too. You both got Sudoku? it wrong. No. S U D O K U. It's one nil to Jules. And this question here: What's Australia's largest state or territory? Sue said Queensland. Jules said Western oh, Australia. Of course. Correct answer. Is Western Australia. Yay! Jules, you're smarter than Sue. She just won $400. Woo-hoo! Amazing. Thank you. You can celebrate with a mojito. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Use it with vodka. And gin and um, white rum. Anything More else free. Yeah. You're fun, Jules. Get in the ca- Are you going to get in the cave lots? Yeah. yeah. Get in the cave. Yay. He's chafing at the bit. Look at him. French cave. Oh, it's yeah. a weird cave here. Sounds like they put soundproofing um, up in there. Yeah, it's got pretty good soundproofing. Uh, I've got a hundred dollar Finn McCool's voucher for you to add to your four hundred. That takes you to five hundred dollars value. Finn McCool, Brisbane's best Irish pub on Brunswick Street Mall. So you'll have an absolute field day there. I'll tell you what, just when I'm feeling good, then you can head next door to Retros. Hundred dollar voucher for Retros as well, so you can dance the night away. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.